If you've ever used the native form validation that comes with HTML, you'll know it leaves a little bit to be desired, but luckily there's actually some pretty easy ways with a couple of attributes to make it much, much better. Hello my front end friends and welcome back to yet another video and if you're new here my name is Kevin and here at my channel I hope you fall madly deeply in love with CSS but today we're actually not doing too much CSS and we're focusing on some HTML let's dive right in and take a look at form validation uh, so here's a simple example that I have set up where if I come in and I, I put some stuff and I hit submit I get this please include the at symbol in the address it's missing that and if I do that I also say it, you need something after it <laughs> and if we keep doing that well it actually works and I don't need like a dot com or something so that's super super frustrating at the beginning and then of course for password validation there's not a lot the browser knows how to do out of the box uh, but we're going to look at how we can spice this up just a little bit and so let's start by looking at the password one actually, because it's a little bit easier. And then we'll jump up to the email one that's a little bit more complex. And for this one, we're gonna shrink this down because we're doing a lot of HTML and just really fast. I have these two form groups here inside of form. Uh, this, my label here, my input. And one thing that's important is I have put both of these as required because if they're not required and uh, it won't give me an error if I try and submit and it's blank. Uh, whereas if I put required, then it will let me um, submit. It, it shouldn't allow me to submit if it's blank. Please fill out this field because we haven't filled it out. So required on both of them. I have put the type for them. So type email, type password. That does help us with the default and it also helps us have hidden characters there. Now, as I said, we're gonna start with the password. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the required from the email just so I don't have to fill it out every single time we're getting through all of these. Uh, and then here on this input, I am going to come on this and we're going to use a pattern here. Now pattern is an interesting attribute that we can use on inputs. Uh, pattern is not available on all inputs, but it is on text, password, email, telephone, search and URL. Depending on what you're doing and the type that you have set up, you can use the pattern. And it uses regex, which scares me and I think is a black magic. But luckily, uh, the b basic basics of it aren't too bad, which is why we're going to start here. And then we're going to move up over into the email where things get more complex. And we'll look at a cool tool that can make it a little bit easier. So the tool that we're going to start with uh, by looking at this just to help us out is re uh, regexr.com. I'll link it in the description. And this just makes it a little bit easier because you can put examples here. So let's put in like a password that someone might put in of uh, password one, two, three. <laughs> so the main reason I'm doing this is because I want a capital letter and I want to have numbers in there, lowercase, and maybe we should put a symbol as well. And we want to say that all of these are acceptable. So right now you can actually see if let's put a whole bunch of symbols at the end and you can see right now this is not working. Password one, two, three would be accepted, but having all of this at the end, this doesn't match the pattern that we have right here. So I'm actually going to delete everything we have there and let's zoom in just to make this a bit bigger. And when we use regex, it is case sensitive. So we're going to do square brackets first. And we're going to say we want to allow it to accept A to Z. So you can see it's this is working. It's saying all of these are valid but I also want it to be able to accept capitals. So it's kind of weird, but we're gonna do A, Z like that. No space or anything, just how regex works. And now you can see password would be all things that are acceptable, but we also wanna say that it can select any numbers. So then we can just add zero to nine, and now it's added those numbers in there and everything there is working. And it's just getting the individual characters, which is perfect. The next thing I want it to do is to be able to get different symbols. And I guess we should put some different ones in here. And actually let's start with that. So I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna copy this. And let's go back to my email patterns here. And where I have the pattern, I'm gonna put that in. There's no forward slash, anything else like that that you might often find with when you're using regex. And we'll come here, we don't need the email because it's not required anymore, but we do need to put a password. Now this should work and it should allow anything basically we want, but there's one more thing we need to do. But first here the type is, I'm gonna change this text for now just so we can see the passwords that I'm entering. Uh, and so we should be able to put anything. I'm just going to hello. And if I hit submit, it should work, but it's not working. And in just with this form validation, we need the plus right here just to say that it's um, any length would also work. So now if I write hello and I hit submit, it works. Cool. Not We're going to not found, but let's just, I haven't set this up to actually do anything. Um, but we can see that it's actually working and this is valid. But of course, text, you know, we want this to be at least eight characters. So how can we check for it to be at least eight characters is instead of putting the plus here, I can put curly braces. 
and I'm going to delete the plus and I'm going to put an eight and a comma. And now it's actually going to check it to see if it's eight. So if I write hello and I try and submit that, please match the request in format. This tip is terrible, but we're going to fix that. Uh, but let's do hello, hello and hit enter. It's over eight characters long. So now it's working. Perfect. Now we actually want to improve that tool tip. So how can we improve the tool tip is when we have this, we can also add, let's add it here. Actually, we're going to do a title and the title can be used as a tool tip. Now, one thing for accessibility reasons, you'd ideally want the requirements to actually be on screen. I'm sure you've filled out a password thing and actually put too many characters, but you only find out after you try creating your account or just whatever. Sometimes it's not enough, whatever it is. Um, it drives me nuts when it's like maximum of 21 characters or something, but that's for another day. Um, but here we can say must be at least eight characters. And now if I come in here and I write hello for my password, hello, must be at least eight characters. It says, please match the requested format, must be at least eight characters. So at least there's a little bit more information actually showing up in that tooltip when it comes up, which is super, super useful instead of just getting frustrated with that default one that's there. Um, so yeah, that's a, a decent start. Now there's definitely more to this patterns and stuff you can do to make sure that there's like a capital, a lowercase and a number or a symbol or whatever it is. And well, right now we don't even have symbols in here, uh, but let's go into the emails and sort of explore a little bit more of what we can do here. And of course, uh, so let's come up here and put required. We saw that the problem with this hello at hello, it, it accepts that, um, which is terrible. If I hit submit, it doesn't see an issue with this. Um, it's skipping over it. And that drives me nuts. <laughs> so we want to fix that a little bit on the default one that's right here. And once again, we are going to use a uh, pattern for that. So pattern is equal to. So with our pattern here, the question is, how can we actually make this work? It's not that complicated. Um, so if we come back to here where we had that, we have to think of like what goes in an email address. So we're going to say, if it's inside the square brackets, we're saying select you know, anything in here is valid. So we can say A to Z is valid. People also like putting numbers in there. So just like before, we can say zero through nine. Now this is lowercase only. If you want to accept uppercase as well, we can also say A uh, to Z like that. And you can also include any symbols in here that you want to include. So people often have periods in them. They might have an underscore in there. Uh, you have pluses because you can, even if you use like Gmail or something, you can do plus and then add stuff and it will still go to your at like a regular email address. And I don't know if there's any other symbols you'd want in there, but those are ones that we can include. Uh, if there's other symbols that should be in there, double check to make sure for valid emails. Uh, of course, there's also hyphens. Uh, I think other special characters are allowed, so you can include the range of special characters you want to make sure right here, no problem. Uh, if you want more, because I think uh, pretty much any special character is valid as long as it's before the at. Uh, but then what we're going to do is go outside of this and do plus the at symbol. And so this means we're going to have a range of content. And actually, let's take that off. And here, let's just put in like an email address test. You can see it's working because this is matching what we want. Uh, but then the at symbol is not, but here, you know, this is not including the at symbol, but here, then we can say plus at, and you can see that whole thing is now valid. It's, it's matching what my search is here. If I take that off, we're not matching anything because we have a range of characters that are matching, but we don't have the at symbol in there. So we need to have the at symbol. And because of how this is set up, if the at symbols first, it doesn't work. We need to have the characters. Then we're going to have an at symbol, except <laughs> there we go at symbol. Uh, and then we want to do pretty much the same thing, though I don't think all those special characters are allowed. So we can do another range of content. And we also want to include um, the the hyphen. Now, I'm not doing the hyphen here because I don't want it. I, I, oh, it's letting me do it just in case you can put a space just to make it more obvious. So uh, you can see this is now failing. But if I came and I put more characters here, uh, it is going to work, but we're stopping at one. But I think when we're done, it, it should match up no matter what. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but we want to say accept a new range of characters. And the next thing we want to do is do we want to ensure that we have the, the dot. Now, the problem with putting the dot out here is it's um, looking that matches any character except line breaks. I don't want to match any character except line breaks. It's not a wild card that we want. Uh, so I'm going to come up and put a backsplash backslash here because this means that we're escaping this and we're actually mean like the symbol, like the dot. We want a period that we want that character and not the regex version of what that actually means for like looking through a range of stuff. So now we need to have the dot here. And now, as you can see, this is working. 
So whatever we have here, we can have numbers, hyphens, and it's all working. And a lot of the ones that you'll find at the end here will have the full range here as well. So we can do this again and just say like A to Z. So here, then we need something, but you'll often here see that it's going to come in and it's gonna go for a two to four, which means it has to be two to four characters long as you know, after my dot, generally, you know, we have a dot com, it fits, we have a dot co that fits, dot net that fits, dot gov, whatever it is. Uh, and in the old days, two to four is very similar here, or very common, I should say, and that was about all that we had, but now we also have things like dot design. And that means this isn't actually valid and it's not matching. Um, it's matching everything up to the fourth character. So we could actually say two comma, and then anything that comes after would be fine. If you wanted to put an upper limit on it, you could, but I think, you know, generally speaking, it's a little bit, I'm gonna leave it like this. I think this is fine. And I'm just gonna select all of this, copy that. This may not be perfect. I'm just, we're looking at how this works, how we can build this with regex. If you might wanna build, make this a little bit more robust for your own to make sure that all the special symbols that you want accepted are acceptable. and do you want to allow capitalization and other things like that? So um, just to say, not necessary to copy and paste this one, um, but just to give us a base of how this can actually work. And now let's come here and we're going to do test at test, which on the old version would work. But now if I do it, it doesn't. <laughs> Please enter a valid email address. And then if I actually come in with a.com and I hit submit, this is actually showing up as valid now, which is wonderful. And it takes a little bit of time to set that up, but you can just have this ready and use it every single time. And then you have in browser form validation, you'd be using regex with JavaScript to be doing a lot of this anyway. And as we saw, we can use the title for the tooltip or to help give more information within the tooltip. We could bring in another one here. Uh, they could check for it too. Now these tooltips aren't smart, so they don't know what the issue is. They just know it's not matching the pattern, but I think it's good enough just to sort of remind people of what the problem might be. And if you think this is kind of cool and you'd like to do more stuff without having to rely on JavaScript for it, there's actually a way to have a search field with auto suggestions where you're not actually using any JavaScript in that either. If you wanna know how that's done, there is a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I wanna give a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Lucas, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim for being my enablers of awesome on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for your monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.